Hi friends. Hello. Happy Friday. Holy smokes. It's Friday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm Lisa Hetrick. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to see everybody here today. I see a bunch of people popping in. We have lots of people already popping in. We were chatting in the chat before we all went live, which was kind of super excited. So, so excited to see everybody popping in. Good morning, everyone. I see some places are warm and some places are cold. Okay, so I'm in Maryland and today it's, let me look at my watch, see what it says. I think it says 62 degrees. Come on now, it's January, right? And we did just have like a snowstorm last week when I went live. So you never know. Maryland has weird weather. Okay, friends, today. Hey, hey, Nancy. Hey, Pamela. Teresa. Oh, so many, so many friends popping in. Hello, everyone. I'm just super excited. Okay, today I have a really, really fun tutorial. And it's kind of a mashup with the stamps, with my newest stamp set, You um, Lift Me Up with Gina K Designs, and I'm going to be playing with a stencil <clears throat> from Gina K Designs called Heartfet, Heartfelt. Now, I've used stencils before on this channel, and I'm going to show a couple examples um, of things and just kind of show you my sophisticated stencil storage, um, which kind of gives you a little indication that it's not so sof sophisticated. But today we're going to have some watercolor fun. We're going to make a card. I'm not going to focus so much on the anatomy of the making of the card as I am the watercolor techniques that we're going to cover. And we're going to cover two, wet into wet watercolor and creating watercolor effects with your stencils. So a couple things. If you guys have questions, type questions in the comments. My questions are over here on this different screen. And today... I have another camera set up over there, over top of my work table. Um, this is kind of like the hub table where I shoot and work and do computer stuff. And then I have my work table where I paint and, and create and do all the things. And it's one of those desks that go up and down. I have a camera set up over there because I'm going to share um, a little bit about what I'm going to cover in next week's tutorial on that camera. Just being geeky here, just nerding out. We're going to nerd out this whole entire time, friends. Okay, let's go ahead and head to our down camera and just kind of go over everything. Hello, everybody. We have so many friends joining us right now. I think Friday is like a magical day, at least for the winter it is. All right, let's head to the down camera. Okay, friends, so here, all of the supplies... Instead of me taking a ton of time and going through all the supplies that I'm using... All of the supplies are listed down below in the description here on YouTube and on Facebook. So um, if you have any questions about supplies along the way, just ask me and I will be sharing them and talking a little bit about them along the way as well. Okay, so here is the card that inspired today's design or did today's concept. But I really liked, so we're using my newest stamp set called Lift Me Up from Gina K Designs. We've got this big honking wide open balloon space, which, you know, kind of looks like it could be a lot of different things, right? This big honking wide open balloon space. And I really loved the concept of being able to do something different on the top and do some watercolor elements on the bottom and have that banner element come across. So this project that I created was kind of the inspiration for today's project. Um, that's so weird. Okay, Zan just said um, ads made me miss the start. I don't know why. YouTube friends, I have to tell you, if there's ads that run before this, YouTube decides where the ads go. I'll do my best to try to control those in the future. Maybe there's some settings I can do, but I'm not really sure if there is because they really just kind of do what they want. But anyway, sorry about that. Okay. All right. So today we're going to make a card similar to this, except it's not going to be all big honking blooms up here. We're going to, I'm going to talk about how to divide that shape and we're going to do some stencil, stencil work. So I'm going to bring in, 
I'm going to talk a little bit about stencils. So let's talk, get into it. Here is my super sophisticated storage system for stencils, <laughs> which is not sophisticated at all. I just kind of have them in here loose um, and I grab them. But this was a tutorial that I did uh, a couple months ago, last year, where we used stencils to create that watercolor rain effect. So I really wanted to kind of bring it back up that stencils are incredibly useful for creating our watercolor effects. So, um, and again, my sophisticated system. I'd love to hear in the comments, like, how are, does anybody have a really good system for um, storing their stencils? Because this is mine. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's a bad system, but it's a system, right? Um, I'm not like super, super organized, but I feel like, hey, they're in this clear envelope. That's pretty organized. So, all right, today's stencil that we're going to use. <laughs> Oh, some people are sharing. Dawn says mine are in a file cabinet. Catching you live from Sweden. That's so cool. And I, I hope I say your name right. Yulrika. Hi. Catching from Sweden. That's so fun. Okay. So today we're going to do some stencil techniques with this heartfelt, heartfelt stencil. And then we're going to build the card. So I've got some watercolor paper here. I'm using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. This is my favorite watercolor for watercolor paper for paper crafting projects. It's 100% cotton. I talk about it every week um, and it is listed down below in the description. So this is the paper that I wanna share some of the techniques with. We're gonna do two different ones. I'm going to use, and the way, I'm gonna take my stencil. I've got my um, Gina K blender my blender brush, and I'm using some Distress Ink, picked raspberry. And I'm just going to show you some differences between the effects that I can get with the Distress Inks versus using my Gina K water-based inks. It's pretty, very, very much similar. Now, I'm blending challenged, so I don't like to use... Um, I don't like to use blender brushes that much on regular paper because I can never seem to get a super, super crisp image. So what I really like about using the blender brushes with stencils is that I can create those watercolor effects that I want to create with them. Everybody's sharing their different techniques for storing Um notebooks, clear pages, lots of different techniques. So I'm going to take some water and I'm going to spray it onto this um, distress ink and you can see whoosh immediately I get that watercolor effect that I want. So my blending techniques and the fact that I'm a little bit challenged with my blending techniques don't matter with the watercolor techniques because I get that whooshy, whooshy watercolor effect. Now this is one of the easiest way to do it. Stencil, little bit of color, blending with your blending brush, spritz it and we get that whooshy watercolor effect. Now I wanna show you, I'm gonna come down here in this corner. Oh, I got a little bit of a mess here. Got a little bit of water running all over. Let's move it around. Everybody's sharing their, um, using binders and pH protectors. I, I don't know, I, I kind of like my system. Maybe I'll change it, maybe I won't. I probably won't. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna use some Gina K inks. So the Distress inks, and many of us know this, that the Distress inks are water-based. They're really, really made for a lot of watercolor or water-based techniques. But you know what, friends? So I can make this happen with the Gina K water-based inks as well. And, and the reason why is because I'm using watercolor paper. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just getting, I'm just going around, a little whooshing around here with my blender brush. And if I work quickly enough, see how I've got more of a perfected, kind of pretty polished look here? But I can get that color to move with Gina's um, inks as well. And it actually, really, really like it because look what's happening here. 
let's just move this out to the side here. Close a few things up so I don't get it in there. So look what's happening here. I used, granted, picked raspberry is a little bit of a lighter color, but it is meant for distress techniques. It's meant for water. So we get a little bit more of an intense whoosh when I add water to it. But look at the effects that I can get with my Gina K inks, okay? My um, water, my, my Gina K inks, my water-based inks, so, um, or waterproof inks. You can really, really get that whoosh in some areas, but look, I still can preserve some of the shape and the intensity of color. And I really like that. I really, really like that a lot. Um, now, we've got Distress. Let's go ahead and pop this in. Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Okay, let's just pop this in here in case anybody wants to take a quick screenshot. That's Distress Ink. Okay, and then this is Gina K, Gina K Ink. And I love Gina K Ink. Of course I do. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, now, everybody's popping in. Catherine says, you do you, whatever system works. Yeah, I don't have a lot. I don't like, I have a lot of technology systems. I'm really good with tech. I have a lot of like processes and things for technology that like are automated, but I'm getting, and I'm getting better with my organization systems. But to be honest, when I get art supplies, I, I don't like, when I get my arts and my paper crafting supplies, I don't like to spend more time organizing them than I do playing with them. Does that make sense? Does anybody else feel that way? Okay, now I want to take this heartfelt stencil and kind of show you, we're going to get a little messier now. I'm going to take a little bit of that stencil right up here and I'm going to bring in some watercolor paint. Now these are the three blues that I used last week in last week's tutorial for negative painting. And I recognize a lot of you were here last week when we did that. So again, we're just kind of using some of the same supplies this month and building on the techniques that we're learning. I wanna talk a little bit about using watercolor with your stencils, okay? Now, watercolor is whooshy, right? We add water, we can thin out our pigment. It can get really, um, <laughs> Just Nancy just said, organization, organizing craft supplies is a hobby into itself. It kind of is. It really is. It's not one that I want to pick up. Um, my space is organized, and maybe I'll do a studio tour soon. My studio space, my office space is very well organized. Things are in a specific place, um, but it can get messy up in here. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Now, with our watercolor paint... I want to talk a little bit, and I've talked about this before. I'm going to take a little bit of my paint here, and I've got my brush going in here. And right now what I'm creating is very, there's a little water, a little bit of water on my brush, and I'm getting kind of a thick consistency here. What I'm going for is, oh, look at that color, is a whole milk consistency with the paint. And that is the consistency I'm going to want to use for working with paints and stencils because the more water, more paint, more of that is going to get up underneath the stencil. So if I'm looking for more of a crisp kind of look and feel and I want to use my watercolor paint, I need that consistency to be more on the whole milk side. Let me clean off my brush. And I know I'm going to get that question. I'm using a number six brush. This is the Princeton Heritage. I've been obsessed with these brushes lately. I've talked about them a lot. We do have some tutorials coming up because one of the biggest questions you guys have been asking me lately is like discerning on what kind of brushes to get, right? So, ah, Catherine just said I would love to see a quick tour of your studio. I love that you have open windows. I actually have an open window right now. If you can hear it, you might be able to hear a little bit of traffic. And the reason why is because all the lights and get a little warm and things get warm. So, and it's a gorgeous day. So fresh air, friends. Okay. 
See that consistency? Let's do it again. See how it's more, it's very thick. I can water it down if I want to, but that consistency is more on the whole milk side. If I want a thinner consistency, I add a little bit more water. I'm gonna add just a smidge of water here and I can get add a little bit more water. This is more like a 2% milk, okay? And then I can go even deeper. Let me take my 2% milk, put it up here. A little more 2% milk. Add a lot of water. And then I'm really thinning out that pigment and I'm getting that um, skim milk consistency. Whole milk, whole milk, 2% um, milk and skim milk. We're gonna go for a whole milk consistency for the stencils because the more water, again, the more water we have, um, the more opportunity it has to get underneath the stencil. But I want you to try this technique with your stencils because it gives you those really fun washy watercolor effects that we're going for. So I'm going to go ahead, look at how I'm getting that nice, super, super thick consistency, resisting the urge to add more water. So I've got a lot of pigment here. And I'm going to go ahead and just start brushing it across and trying to make sure it gets into the, um, into the hearts here. So dabbing it in, making sure it gets in there, holding down my stencil. You could use um, some tape or some pixie spray or something like that if you wanted. Now, I really love the way this looks. I'm going to pick this up. We'll see. There's going to be some water and there's some pigment that got up underneath that stencil. So we got, see how it got super smooshed. Um, so yeah, let's do it again. That's one of the disadvantages of doing this technique. So I'm going to come in, try again. This time, it tells me that my consistency wasn't thick enough. <laughs> Zan just said, okay, I literally have no clue on the milk consistency I need to go buy. You use, I use oat milk too because we don't do dairy here. But um, So oat milk would be more in your 2% consistency. It has a little bit more water in it. Whole milk is like super thick, super, super thick. And that's what we're going for. So you see my consistency here. I need this consistency to be a little bit thicker so that I can drop this in. This is what I need to, <laughs> Kathy just said, this is what I need to practice. Blending brush works, but it bothers your shoulder. Oh, tell me about it. Frozen shoulder, friend. Okay, this is, you can see I've already gotten it to go up underneath again. All right, not loving this with the brush. I'm glad we did this together. The consistency's right, but using the brush is not fantastic because look at what happens. It literally smooshes. I didn't pre-do this before we went live because I wanted to do this together because it's a viable technique and I wanted to do it together. So not loving the way that any of this is coming out. Let's bring in another piece of paper and we're going to try it a different way. Love that. Ultimately, I'm going to be doing this in our final card, but I really, really wanted to tackle the use of our watercolor paint. Um, I just looked up and there's a big, there's a ladybug on the ceiling. Don't you just love that when a ladybug just pops out of nowhere? Let me put my glasses on to make sure that there's a ladybug in not a um, spider. If it was a spider, it would be a spider. No, it is a ladybug. Okay, so I am going to, hey Mindy, I am going to grab something different to work with my watercolor paint here. Hold on. I'm going to grab a different brush. Okay, I just wanted to grab a, a brush that was a little bit um, not around, just a little bit thicker. 
and then let's just come in and kind of grab some of this paint and I'm just going to start to drop it in see how I'm dabbing it in this is like this is a filbert brush but it's sort of like a stencil brush if you think about it if anybody can remember the days of painting their walls with stencils loving that <laughs> Catherine said this is fascinating watch you find the right applicator and you know what Catherine I didn't want to perfect this on my own I've done this many times but I didn't want to perfect it on my own off camera and then just kind of show you I wanted us to learn together so I'm digging this so see how this brush is a little bit thicker it's giving me some opportunity to kind of pat that watercolor in so I'm liking that so a brush that's a little bit thicker we're patting it in you're using your watercolor paint if you're feeling super challenged with using your blending brushes this is going to be an alternate technique and I'm able to kind of get that look and feel if I spritz it with a little bit of water I can still make some of that paint whoosh Ooh, I can make it whoosh a lot and that's really going to depend on the kind of paint that you have so there's my second option, my third option, of stenciling. Let's just go stenciling in watercolor. Whoops, sloppy handwriting. Watercolor paint. You could probably take your brush and dip it in the watercolor paint and kind of drop it in, but you know what? Your your blender brush, but you can find if you have a bigger brush that has a little bit more bristles and you can kind of just pounce it in. I think that would work too. Catherine just asked a question. Um, was your bigger brush dry to start with? Oh, fantastic question. Fantastic question. Um, Catherine, yes, this big brush was completely dry. So, and the other thing about this brush is that it doesn't hold as much water as this one does. So in that case, a brand matters right so the Princeton heritage brushes are known for holding a lot of water even with getting my consistency at that whole milk consistency I still had a ton of water on this brush which indeed affected the look uh, the look of my stencil here so this brush doesn't hold a lot of water this is more um, you know you this is more, uh, this is a pigeon letters one. This is a great brush. This filbert brush didn't hold a lot of water. It's more on the craft side of brushes. So uh, Taclon brush. So it doesn't like, it's not gonna, yeah, it's not gonna hold as much water. So it, and allowed me to retain that paint at that whole milk consistency that I was going for. Okay. We like totally nerded out here. Let's go ahead in and let me get my stencil cleaned off here because we're gonna start to build. Look at that. Oh, this is a little stainy. That's okay. It is what it is. I've got my tidy towel here. My tidy towel is not so tidy. Look at it. I use this thing a lot, a lot for a lot of things that aren't even um, stamping related. Okay, let's go ahead in and just kind of clean off a little bit and move on to our next thing. Okay, now I'm bringing in the big honking die cut piece. So from the Lift Me Up stamp set, so we've got the die and there's also a coordinating stamp. I just went ahead and used the die and cut some watercolor paper, some of the watercolor paper out of the die. I also took the die from the set. Where's my die here? Here we go. Oh, Zan just asked a quick question. Let me just answer that. Here is the die, the banner die that coordinates with the banner sentiment on the banner stamp in the set as well. I went ahead and cut that out in some passionate pink. Zan, <laughs> Zan's question was, do you know what the bristles on the bigger brush are made of? Yeah, these are made of Taclon. So they're not, um, they're not like 
of a hair at all like these brushes would be um, or that brushes that are like um, have like faux squirrel hair or things like that hold a lot of water so looking for a stiffer brush to use with your watercolor paints and your stencil you're looking for something that's more on the synthetic side like a taclon hope that helps hope that helps okay Let's go ahead and start um, dividing my space here before my balloon. Now, the easy way I'm going to do it, I'm going to bring in my pencil. <laughs> Gives clean vibes. That's so funny. I'm bringing in my pencil here. We're going to divide our space. So remember, our, scent, our um, inspiration was this card that I did where I divided the space. In this case, I actually cut it to fit that exact shape. And then we did a pattern above here with the, um, the flowers that are in this stamp set. We're gonna do something a little bit different because we're, we're gonna do stenciling on top, watercolor on bottom. I'm gonna take my banner and I'm just gonna kind of position it. This banner is intentionally designed to go edge to edge. So I'm moving that die cut down just to kind of get that, um, you're welcome, Zan, just to get that lined up. I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm just going to, it's a very light touch, and just draw across here. Because under here, we're going to start to do our watercoloring. Now, the technique I'm going to use for the watercolor underneath here is wet into wet technique. I'm coming back to use my number six brush here. Look at my paint water. Isn't that cute? And then we've got our color here. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this to the side a little bit. I'm going to paint my water on. So it's a little bit tinged because my water is already a little bit blue. And I'm just going to paint water right into my watercolor paper. So I'm getting the brushes wet, the paper's wet. I'm going to add some pigment to this, and then we're going to get that wet into wet watercolor effect. I'm going to come in and just lift up some of my, this is a, a turquoise blue color, and I'm just going to start to drop it in. Whoosh! Let it do its thing. I'm just going to follow that line, and remember, watercolor will only go where the water is. So notice how it's not pushing up to the top. It's not going beyond that barrier of where I put the water. That's because watercolor only likes to be where the water is and will only go where the water, water goes. So these wet into wet techniques can be super, super fun because wherever you put the water, you can drop your watercolor in and watch it go whoosh. Now, the brand I'm using for watercolor is my Mary Blue. I'm going to come up here and just add a little bit more just adding a little bit more we're going to do some darks and lights and then i'm going to take some away this particular color is really a staining color so i'm working you can see i'm kind of working a little bit quickly let's move some of that color around you can see the more water i add the more it wants to move it around and I want to leave some area in here that's a little bit um, of the paper, like some of that paper coming through, because that's where our sentiment's going to go. So wet into wet, but look at how controlled that is, because I've got that line there. Ooh, I've got water floating underneath it. Holy smokes. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more here. I really just want this to get a little darker. Then we're going to dry it. I'm going to pull some of this away. So everything is wet here. My brush is wet. Everything is super wet. I'm going to come in and use my brush that doesn't have any pigment on it. It's wet, not super wet. And I'm going to lift some of this away. Okay, so this is a lifting technique. I can pull some of that color away. But you can see that some of that blue is still there. It's still there because this particular paint is turquoise green, even though it's called turquoise green, even though it's blue, 
um, is really a staining paint. So you might see that on your watercolors or the watercolor brand you're working with. The color might say that it's staining. It would give you its pigment information and it might say that it's staining. If it's a staining color, it does that. It's hard to lift all of it up and away. It just stains your paper. Um, a lot of blues stain. They just do. All right, I'm just kind of, now I'm just futzing because I just want to add a little bit more color here. Zane just shared, I've only recently gotten into watercolors, but I love it. Okay, and she just said that she's terrible at it. Okay, one of the things I want you to remember, because watercolor feels very intimidating when people start to work with it, because it's a little bit wild and wonky and it blooms and it does all kinds of things and different brands do different things. But just remember this, watercolor wants to be with the water. They're friends, right? They're friends. And it will only go wherever the water is. And it will only, if you don't have water already on your paper, it's only going to go where you put it. And it's only going to travel to wherever the water is. So it can kind of help you get some control over it without and still have that loose feeling. You can see how controlled this line is, but we've got this beautiful washy kind of beautiful watercolor happening here. I'm just pulling away some more of this color, just gradually. Now we're going to come in and dry. I'm going to take my face off. <laughs> Francis, I'm so intimidated. Well, I hope, I'm going to dry the back here. I hope over time, everybody becomes less intimidated. Hi, Karen. Karen just popped in. Right, let's tidy this up. This is a mess. Right. Now, I love the whoosh. Angie said, I love the whoosh and the blooms. Okay. So watercolor, that was a wet, super wet into wet technique. Once it is dry, it fades back significantly. You can see how it's faded back quite a bit from that bright, bright brightness that we had going. I'm going to go in and add another layer just because I really want a little bit more darkness up here. So my brush is wet. The paper is dry. So we're not doing wet into wet we are doing wet into dry. And I'm just putting a little bit of color there, cleaning off my brush, and then just taking my clean brush and just kind of sp spreading this out. Just tap, 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 tap to kind of blend that out a little bit, even with my just little bit. Um, oh, Dawn just asked a really great question. Let me just pull some of this color See, I'm just kind of blending it into the rest of the color. So I'm getting dark to light happening here. And I'm still retaining that white that's happening right here from the color that I lifted off. Friends, I can hear myself and we have hit full nerd out phase with our technique today. So I'm kind of giggling about that. Dawn just said, do you ever get any warping? Yes, you absolutely do. And... You can see there's a little bit of warping, but we're going to adhere this to our final card project and I'm going to use liquid glue, Gina K liquid glue. So that warping will kind of even itself out. Um, if you, it, and it depends on what kind of watercolor paper you're working with because we're working with the Strathmore ready cut watercolor. It's hundred percent cotton. It's um, great for paper crafting. If I added It'll take a lot of water, but if I went full ham and added tons and tons of water to it, it would get a lot more warpy. I'm kind of controlling what's happening here. Okay, now I want to just hit this real quick. We're just going to dry this real, real quick. Um, oh, Deb just said something really interesting. Let me just dry this real quick, and I'm going to address that question. <laughs> okay. Dev says it helps when we can see your dab off rag. Okay, here it is. Let's see. 
here it is. It's usually over to the side here, but I hope that's helpful. So you can see me dabbing off a little bit. Let's get that in the frame. I don't think it was really in the frame that well. Um, Zan just said, do you think you have a, a heavy hand? No, friend, I do. I have a super, super heavy hand. So I've learned when you want to resolve the heavy hand issue, as, as we're, we're getting ready to nerd out a little bit more, um, choking up on your brush, like right into here, into the ferrule of the brush, will kind of help give you control. And you can be heavy handed. If you want to be a little more light handed, come out a little bit. It gives you... And it forces you to kind of intentionally be a little softer in your approach. And you can be like super washy when you're kind of doing it out this way. But if you feel like you need more control, come closer. Like you would be writing with a pen. Um, okay. <laughs> the geek out is my damn. I can literally, friends, I can hear myself. And part of my brain's like, Lisa, you're geeking out too much. You're nerding out too much. And the other part is like, let's do it full hand. So that stuff's going on up inside there, which is, I don't know if I should have admitted that or not. Okay. All right. We've got our bottom piece done here. And I really like that crisp line that we have. But remember, I'm not so worried if you're doing this technique at another time or something like this, and your crisp line kind of isn't so crisp. Don't forget, we're covering it. We're covering it. Right now, we're just using it um, as our guide. Okay. Uh, everybody's saying some, some fun things. Excited to incorporate and play with your stencils. Good. Okay. Okay. We've got the heartfelt stencil with Gina K. Let's flip that over. This has got a little pixie stuff on it in the back of it. I'm going to plop this right here. And I'm going to use, I'm going to go, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to use the Gina K ink versus the picked raspberry that I thought I was going to use. I'm going to use my Gina K ink and I'm going to use my blender brush. And I, I've i shared this many times, I'm blender brush challenged. So getting those super beautiful blends on the, on the Gina K white, I'm not your gal. But Mindy is here. If Mindy's still here, she can raise her hand. She is the blending queen. But I like to do this blending technique with stencils on watercolor paper because I'm just going to whoosh it out anyway. So I'm going to start in the, in the middle here and I'm going to intentionally come down into my blue area a little bit because we're going to do a little bit of color mixing with this color. I'm going to let the color on the outer edge kind of fade out a little bit but concentrate a little bit on that middle. Just kind of come in and let some of the... See how I'm just letting, adding a little bit of the... Um, of the pink and letting it, letting it come into the turquoise a little bit. We've got a mix of colors happening. That blue is mixing with the pink and we're getting purple. Love it. A little bit of color mixing. Mindy just laughed. She is the blending queen. And she just, and she does it with those nails and everything. It's just amazing. Amazing. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm just gonna spritz it from kind of this distance. So I almost have this up pretty high and I'm just kind of spritzing this from a distance. So it's not super, super watery, but I am getting that Gina K ink to whoosh a little bit. And I've got that washy effect without overdoing it, without like super whooshing it. Now let's come back and take a peek at the sample that I did. When it dries, look at that. We've got that whooshing happening. If you're using Distress Ink, you're going to get the same kind of whoosh. Added a little bit more water with the Gina K inks, and I can get a bigger whoosh. Okay. <laughs> I totally agree about Mindy. Everybody's agreeing about Mindy because we know she is the blending queen. She also is the tweezer queen. I know I'm like calling her out here because she's here on the live today, but she's the tweezer queen, and I'm tweezer challenged. Those I forget what they're called, but the tweezers that go in the opposite direction. She uses them all the time. And I literally will hold them and my brain will be like, what are you supposed to do with this? Why can't you grab the thing? It just doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work. Okay, we're going to come in and we're going to dry this up a little bit. 
I'm loving, look at this purple. Look at the purple, the pink. So excited. So the Gina K pink, we use the Gina K pink, passionate pink. Look, I was getting ahead of myself. I was starting to, my brain was nerding out. Um, passionate pink. And we used our watercolor paint. And I got those two colors to bleed and blend together. And we made a beautiful violet color. She will not deny the tweezer. That's so funny. And look at it's bleeding. Some of that blue is bleeding up in there. Put that beautiful washy watercolor effect. Oh, I'm digging it. Loving it. Let's just give this a nice dry. Then we're going to move to like, um, <laughs> own it, Mindy. Yeah, own it, girl. All right, I'm loving that. Okay, let's talk. Let's just break this down even further. Oh, I love this. Okay, I intense, when I use my stencil and I use my blender brush with the passionate pink, I was really intense in the amount of color I blended in on the stencil in the center here. On the outer edges, far less. So we've got that contrast between, and that value, that value scale of our darker color becoming lighter on the outer edge here. And we have that super, super beautiful purple because that pink is mixed with the watercolor paper, watercolor color underneath. And we've got that two color thing going on. I am digging this. Oh, I'm loving the way it looks. Okay. All right, friends, let's move on to the next thing. We're going to come in. I've got a piece of passionate pink cardstock here. I have a piece of the Gina K layering white cardstock. And it's the, I cut it with the master, from the master layouts four. This is linked down in the description. This is one of my favorite layers. Any of those stitched layers where we can get, it doesn't entirely cover the A2, you get that nice little spacing around the edge. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of glue, just testing my glue. Just add a little bit of glue to the bottom here. Not a lot, not too much. Okay, open up my card. Let's get that layer on here. And I'm eyeballing it. If you, you know, don't like to eyeball, put it in your misty. All the things. Do the measurements. I don't do any of that. I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna um, just kind of eyeball it and go from there. Okay. I've got my card base and my card, um, my card layer going. And now I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my balloon my big honking balloon on here because we're going to start to build some pieces around it this is just this card is coming together super super quick super quick let me check the um let me check while we glue let's just add a little glue here let me check the comments ah angie just said "Ooh, look at me when i looked away look what happened angie just said Passionate Pink is becoming her new favorite. I, I use Passionate Pink, I think, in every single release. I absolutely love it. Okay, I'm just adhering this to the white. Love that. I really love that Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor with the Gina K layering white. I think it works really, really well. Um, and we get some really nice contrast between our watercolor paper is a little heavier and our layering white so we're going to do some dual layering here we've done all this watercolor work on the watercolor paper now i'm just going to start to build some stamped images onto my base layer and um yeah pull this all together all right i've got tranquil teal another favorite color of mine and it also goes really well with the um with the watercolor paint just kind of blank there for a minute. Inking up the basket from the Lift Me Up stamp set. Just kind of eyeballing it, getting close to the bottom there, and then adding the basket to the bottom. Let's see, where's our little tidy towel? Adding the basket to the bottom, just to kind of finish off the bottom of the basket. And now I have 
some new things that I'm going to add. So from the stamp set, we've got these two really whimsical little leafery pieces that have polka dots in them. I'm going to add them right here because I think they're going to be fun. So let's just go ahead and get my passionate pink out. Add them to my corners here. Just kind of eyeball it where it's going to go. It's going to go right there. Let's take that one off. I think this stamp set needs a bath. But I probably won't give it one. I will probably move on to the next project before I give it a bath. Okay. Just kind of adding that little extra bit of leafery right there. Just for fun and for whimsy. To kind of... Also, just to kind of anchor the bottom here of the balloon, it kind of gives us some sense of what's happening here, that we've got this balloon, we've got this basket, and we have these beautiful little frilly things just kind of hanging off the edge of the basket. Oh, Karen just said, I do love how you mix watercolor elements and stamped images. It's kind of my thing. I like it. I really love doing it. Okay, now let's come back to the die. This is the, co the die that coordinates the, in the coordinating die set for Lift Me Up. This is the die that coordinates with the stamp that's a banner, a banner stamp. And I used that banner stamp in that this sample that kind of inspired today's card. But I cut it out. I just cut it out straight up with some passionate pink. We're going to put a little bit of glue. Where did I put the glue? Okay. Ah, everybody's loving the idea of using the stencils with the ink. That was a little bit of a gloop. Let's add a little, just a couple little dots of glue here on my banner. Got a lot of glue. Messy, messy glue. Now let's add a little something right there too. But the glue dries clear. Now I can just layer this right in because we used it as a template, right? So we use it as our template so we know exactly where to put it. So I'm just going to put my hand right here just to kind of hold this down a little bit. I want it to pop up. Let's just hold this down, let that glue adhere to the watercolor paper. I find that the Gina K, um, I have it in one of these bottles that Gina sells that has that really fine tip. I find that the Connect Glue, it's kind of my super favorite because it works really great with watercolor paper. <coughs> Excuse me, it adheres really, really well. Now look at the stencil images that are kind of shining through a little bit of the holes that we have in our banner. Love that. Okay, now if that wasn't enough, I want to add three little blooms. I think we're going to put them over here because look at all this washy watercolor stuff we got going on right here. I'm digging that. And I don't want to cover that up. So, but I do want to add some florals to kind of anchor this whole look before we add our sentiment. <coughs> to add, excuse me, add a little extra something to the design. Okay, let's pop this in. We're going to start with the big one, and then I'm going to layer my other two around that larger one. I think I'm going to pop that right here. And I'm going to use, we're going to nerd out a little bit about design. I'm going to use that bloom, that part of the bloom that's coming to a point as my design anchor. Just kind of anchor it in that hole there. Not cover the hole, but go to the center of the hole. Oh, I could even hear myself. That was a little bit... Yeah, there we go. Nerdy. <laughs> All right, now we're going to add the two little white ones, the two smaller ones. And I'm going to nest, I think I'm going to nest one up here because I kind of want it going off the edge a little bit. And I'm going to nest one right here kind of have that kind of going up in that direction. So we've got we've got our little blooms here and they're kind of drawing our eye across the balloon, the balloon piece. Now, I've got my lift me up sentiment and I'm going to stamp it right in here where we intentionally pulled and lifted off the watercolor. 
we lifted it out. Um, I'm going to use some obsidian amalgam. And I'm going to freewheel this. I'm going to go rogue and freewheel it. So I'm just going to get a lot of good ink on that stamp. You could use your Misty if you really want to line things up. I'm just going to eyeball it. And I am kind of going rogue with it because watercolor paper, sometimes you don't get a really good impression the first time. So that's kind of why I'm holding this down onto the ink pad. Then I'm going to work pretty quickly and give a good, good impression. And I'm kind of rocking the stamp just a little bit so that I can get a really nice solid of that black. And I'm digging that. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. Okay. I'm liking this, liking it. Now, I have another little fun little gem here. This little heart was left over from the die, the new heart die that Gina K just came out with. I did a project with it on a card that I can't seem to find, and I thought it would be right here, and it's not. And this was just like a little leftover piece. So I'm going to use this. Um, <laughs> I can find my glue. And I'm going to add that little dot of glue right there. So this was a little something I had sitting around. It was part of another project. And I'm just going to pop it right there. A little pop of orange with our blue and our turquoise colors really kind of gives a little bit of pop. I'm loving this. Can everybody just see those blooms happening here? That whoosh of watercolor. Kind of controlled though because we use that stencil and we've got that pink and we've got that purple, purpley color kind of happening there. Now let's just finish it off. I got some of these um, sequins. These are disco ball. I think this is disco ball from Gina K. And I've got my picker thing. My Gina K picker. It has that wax piece. This thing is like a lifesaver to me. I'm going to add a little bit of gems up here. Just to finish this card off. One, two, three. Maybe we'll put one here. I'm just kind of being random with where I put them. So hopefully I'll remember where I put the glue. When I, ooh, I don't want that there. So I'm just going to flick that off. I don't think that looks good. So let's just pop that here. And then just kind of pop these in. <laughs> Nerds are us. You guys are cracking me up in the in the chat. Did anybody have any questions about like the technique that we did today with the stencil? Hopefully it made sense. I really, I really did want it to be on the fly, us learning how to use the stencil and the watercolor paint together. So, oh, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, which is fine, but this looks a little weird right here. I'm gonna add because these two are kind of close. I'm going to add a little boop right here and maybe one right there. Um, so in the case of using watercolor paint with your stencil, your brush kind of matters. Go for a brush that is uh, synthetic, doesn't hold a lot of water, and is pretty stiff in nature so that you can take your watercolor paint in that um, with not a lot of water in that whole melt consistency and just kind of tap it in to our stencil area. Because if we don't, what happens is water gets underneath our stencil and then we kind of get mush, right? Controlled using inks and blender brushes. A little bit wild and wonky using our watercolor paint. But it's very, very possible to achieve that effect. And... I'm going to tip you guys off a little bit. In two weeks, I'm going to be doing a tutorial, not next week, but the week after. So yeah, two weeks, where we're going to do watercolor card bases. Stenciling is going to be a big part of it. And I'm going to dive into a couple more techniques to use with your stencils or creating backgrounds with textures and things like that. So a little tip off for that. All right, look at this card. I'm kind of digging it. I am really, really digging it. Really loving it. Zan just asked a question. How did me noticing it? <laughs> oh, 
was yeah, that was funny. That was really funny. We're having fun today in the chat. I'm just like kind of like I keep glancing over and taking a look at all the things that you guys are saying to each other and it's like super funny. Michelle just said, can you please play with your friendship bloom set? I'm struggling with ideas, but I really love the set. No problem. Yeah, we can bring that back in. And um, Michelle, I have other videos on the channel with friendship blooms. So after the, um, after the live, I'll come back in and kind of direct you to some of those videos, give you some links. Okay, I'm really digging this card. Here was our inspiration. We learned quite a bit about watercolor and using our stencils. Here was one that I made yesterday. A little less whooshy, but we did get some whoosh going. I really like the whoosh that happened here because we've got that mix, color mixing happening too, so we got quite a bit of purple. All right, now I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna take my face off. I'm gonna go to my die cut camera um, I don't know why it's called the die cut camera. We're going to call this the work camera. And I'm going to show you this. So I'm also working on what I need to do for that camera over there, which includes sound and includes lighting and all those other things. So let me move this out of the way. So next week's tutorial, I'm going to focus on Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. Okay. And I've got these watercolor sticks, so this is just my, my teaser for next week. Um, because this is a new-to-me product, and we are going to play with them. So they are sticks of watercolor, and look at how beautifully brilliant these colors are. Now, I'm a big fan of Daniel Smith paints. Huge fan. So this is a new-to-me product, and I'm excited. We're going to play with them next week in a project and friends that project is going to be we're going to make a card we're not going to we might use stamps we're probably going to use some stamps from my Gina K line but we're going to do some watercolor hearts and collage them and we're going to make a card together and I'm going to teach a texture technique that's going along with that so Next week's watercolor tutorial is a full on what I'm calling the monthly nerd out tutorial where I'm going to cover a bunch of different techniques and I'm going to focus on a product that people have asked me to like talk about. And that product is super fun and it's new to me and I'm having a ton of fun playing with it. So I'm kind of excited. All right, friends, I hope that you got a lot of of really great information in today's tutorial. I hope you had fun making the card. I'm really digging the way it came out. Um, if you made the card along with me, which most people don't, <laughs> most people just watch and use the techniques. So that's kind of how I do things on this channel. I'm less focused on the card and the anatomy of the card and I'm more focused on the techniques to teach you um, how to mash up watercolor and stamps together to create some really fun projects together. Um, so next week's tutorial I just talked about, if you're on my email list, that that will be dropping into your inbox along with the free download for the hearts for the card. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just draw them out for you and give them to you so you can print them out on your own watercolor paper. And we're going to cut them and collage them together and make a really fun card and learn some watercolor techniques. Total watercolor nerd out next week. Okay. All right, friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so grateful that you're all here. I see everybody um, saying goodbye in the chat. <laughs> Dev said 25 year card maker, new watercolorist. Yay. That's exciting. Well, everything watercolor on this chat. Uh, on this channel. Lots of watercolor techniques um, and lots of paper crafting and card making techniques. Okay. All right, friends, have a great weekend. I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. Be sure to take a peek at, um, if you want to join my email list, the, you can grab that link down below in the description. I also have a free community in my online classroom at craftyourjoy.com. I post a lot of things there that I'm not posting anywhere else. 
um, in social media or otherwise. And I'm really beefing up that community and doing a lot of really fun things with it this year. So I hope you'll join me and it's free to you. Okay, friends, have a great weekend. Again, sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. I hope you have a fun one. Okay, friends, I will see you next week. Bye now.